everybody. Kathy Arbor here with Watercolor Tuesday. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. It's a nice day here. We did survive the frost. I did have a bit of damage though. But that's all part of gardening, right? So last week we were uh, playing with some ink and watercolor making magnolias. And these were the magnolias that were done before the frost hit. Uh, they were protected a little bit because they were underneath a uh, big maple tree that had their leaves out probably half the way. So it managed to uh, survive, still blooming. The other ones, not so much because they were bigger, so I couldn't do anything as far as protecting them. And that's just part of living in zone 5B. <laughs> hey, Tina, good to see you. And then after the stream, I just, I wanted to uh, play a little bit with my pen that uh, I couldn't find, but I found uh, the blue pumpkin nib. Yeah, I love these. They work fantastic and they're not that expensive. And I found my large handle, which it needs to uh, go into. These are great. I always have problems with the uh, mapping nibs because they're so fine and, and small. I don't know why, but I just have problems having the ink flow down the tip. I guess it's <laughs> user uh, error probably. It's not um, that much of a uh, dip pin uh, user. I usually use microns, that type of thing. So today I wanted to draw, I had actually uh, somebody comment that they would like to see a ladybug or poppies and that type of thing. So I found this on Pixabay. So after the stream, I will leave a link if you want to download this picture. But you'll just have to give me a little bit to uh, get that all done. So. This is just scrapbook, or not scrapbooks, yeah, I always say that, sketching paper. And we're just going to see what happens. It's an experiment, really, um, using this type of paper. So I thought I would uh, just put this little ladybug in, and then we'll play. So it's kind of a half moon. Outside curve on the bottom of the way it's uh, positioned, and sectioned legs. Foot down there. That's only showing a few of the legs because of the. The way it's standing. Um, the head is kind of flat looking. It's down, it's eating, I think. It's got all these uh, weird looking things on it. Um, let's just try it as you see it. Look at it. And as far as shapes are concerned. But it's um, a lot easier that way. That's how I view it, using shapes. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of 
They're not round, not dots. They're kind of irregular in shape. Little dots. And this guy's sitting on a branch, not branch, the stem of a poppy. It's not quite out yet. And poppies have all these little fuzzy hairs. And we're not going to paint around these hairs. Uh, I know it kind of looks a little daunting when you're seeing something with all these complex shapes. Um, you're probably wondering how would I even begin to draw all of those. We're going to use some gouache today. I'm going to get my um, shape of the stem fairly close. And then we can just erase any areas. quite bright. Uh, we'll probably put in a bit of uh, ink also. And then I'm not going to do the, well I guess I could. Maybe I will. I like the poppy pod itself. The bud. I'll put that in. So we're kind of almond shaped in a way. We'll just put it going off the page. I'm not going to put all of the hairs on it. We'll do that with wash. Now you can though um, maybe indicate some of these lighter areas here. Kind of like the little dots in a way. And just put some little pods or whatever you want to call them. Little protrusions. The, the little hairs um, sit on it. Seeing most of them in the center here. In. And there's no real patterning of them. Sometimes you'll see that, uh, like centers of flowers, especially like sunflowers. You'll see these, um, uh, certain direction that they're falling into. So these ones don't necessarily have. I'll just put a few in. Uh, if you notice, though, as you go down, because it's a shape, uh, they get a little more concentrated looking. Put a little bit more in the bar. Same with the sides. Sometimes you'll see a uh, few more on the side because of the way you're doing it. Hey, Tori. Good to see you. Just doing a cute little ladybug and sitting on a poppy. We're not going to draw all the fuzz and that. We're, we're going to use some um, wash today. Or maybe, you know, maybe ink. I don't know. We'll see. White ink would do. Uh, like Doc Martin's Bleed Proof would probably work. I'm just going to take some of the darker lines out so we don't see them too much once we're done our painting. So I'm just going to erase some of it, but not all of it. That's what these are great for. You can just take off a little bit. I'll take it all off. There. 
So this is a picture from Pixabay. And like I said, I will leave a link for it if you want to download it. That was cute. I really like the background too, how it's out of focus. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to accomplish that on the sketchbook paper. But if you're doing a uh, watercolor paper, then it's very easy. Uh, it's just a wet into wet technique. And as you can see, you don't have to be exact about all the uh, shapes. So this is a good one for uh, beginners to uh, try out if they want. I'll just, I'll just put it over here so you guys can see that. Well, let's try and see what kind of results we can get. If I just wet, I'm just going to do a small area at a time because I don't want to wet this too much. Because I do have a painting on the other side. But, and I did wet my... Uh, There's lines in there, probably leaves of some sort. You can have hard, you know, like, I didn't wet that side, so let's just put some more water over there. And then I need to take some permanent stock green by uh, Yindu New. And it, it looks like it's just uh, patches, really. Some are bigger than others. You can add a few darker areas in it too. But it's just representing, uh, say, other perennials that are around it. Or Just adding water. I didn't even really clean my brush out. Just added water. And that bright green in here. And then some of that dark, some really dark areas in here. It's almost like a uh, negative painting in a way. You want to use the same colors that you've been using. Now, uh, you could try taking out uh, yeah. we'll just wet area and then just take your brush to wipe off some of those. Representing a blurry background. Okay. Yeah, see, it's just starting to come through. <laughs> so let's draw it. hear me better now? <laughs> no one said anything. Oh, 
Hopefully you can hear me. Good. Too much going on with my garden and everything. I have had a real bad bout of flare-up of arthritis, so my knees are very sore, my, some of my fingers, but <laughs> oh good, <laughs> just totally forgot to put my headset on. want to make sure it's really good and dry. <laughs> Thanks, Tori. Yeah, it had to come just at the busiest time of gardening. So I can't really do a whole lot. <laughs> and I don't want to make things worse so I have to behave myself which is hard to do when you're a gardener but I guess it's uh, practicing uh, <laughs> willpower oh thanks Kim thanks Tori yeah, it'll get better. It usually does. It's just have to uh, behave, eat properly, um, and just make sure you're not overdoing it. Oh, does it? Yeah. Well, you know, I, we aren't doing that for like nine months, ten months. And then all of a sudden spring, it's like weed galore and you have to get out there. <laughs> I've got a cute little um, gardening uh, seat. It's a kneeler and a seat at the same time. So you just flip it over if you want it as a kneeler or you turn it up the other way and you can sit on it. So that's what I use and I just bend over. I can't kneel or squat, so... It takes me takes me a while to do my stuff. That's why I strongly recommend mulch on your gardens, so you don't have to uh, do as much weeding. So, if you notice, the stem is almost the same color as the background, a little different. And what it's going to do um, by bringing it out from the background will be this white once we put the white on. We do have a little bit of a darker color in here, but uh, it'll be the white that uh, finishes it off. So we used a little bit of this permanent sap green, and I'm going to put a little bit of the green Appetite Genuine with it just to darken it. I do love that color. And water. And that should be good enough. Yes, happy for rain. Sorry for the weeds. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just have to... Uh, I just tell myself, you know, it's not like it's a public garden. It's something you enjoy doing. And it'll get done when you're able. Uh, and not too stress about it. Because when you start stressing about stuff, that's when it uh, becomes a chore 
you know, when you're thinking of a deadline or whatever, you have to get it done or somebody's coming over and you want it. Well, the way I look at it now, maybe that's because I'm older. <laughs> if they don't like it, they don't have to be here. Right? That's the way I'm saying it now. <laughs> I'm old enough. I can say that. Yeah, that sticks out still. Yeah, so uh, I'm enjoying uh, my garden. Um, you know, every spring you forget about your knees. You know, you've been sitting all winter practically. And of course, you're, you start planning things think oh I, I want to do this I want to enlarge this <laughs> and then you go oh no you can't do that what are you talking about don't be silly you have troubles with what you have don't be enlarging it <laughs> and I put some blue into this green because oh, this has kind of got a little bit of a bluey tinge to it. And I'll just mix some green back in it. So it's just a little bit of, uh, what is that, indigo. But I want it fairly light. So lots of water on my brush because I'm going to put this as the initial kind of background color. See if I can take that out. Now if this was watercolor paper, this would be a whole lot easier. So if you want to do it a little easier, um, you can get it a, a watercolor instead of just plain scrap paper or copy paper or sketch paper, whatever you're using in yours. So let's dry that because I don't want it to spread. Yeah, you just have to, it's your garden. It's, like, it's the same with your sketchbooks and your art journals. It's your journal. Do what you want in it doesn't matter what other people think if you love it if that's something you like to do then that's perfect so my garden is my kind of growing journal <laughs> I like to play in it experiment so I'm just I'm gonna leave the little dots the background color and then I'm just gonna kind of paint around some of them make them a little bit darker and then we'll go over top of it with a little bit of maybe bleed proof white by Dr. Martin And then we'll just see what it turns out like. You could probably use Posca too. If you don't have uh, Doc Martin's Bleed Proof right White, use uh, acrylic Posca marker or some kind of acrylic marker. It doesn't have to be Posca. Use what you got. If you don't have markers, get out uh, watercolor. Uh, crayons or even Posca or not Posca Prisma pencil crayons or colored pencils Canadians say pencil crayons 
I don't know why, <laughs> but we do. <laughs> Just leave a little bit in between. And I can always lighten this up even more if I wanted to. And uh, let's add a little bit of this color in there too, just along the bottom. Gets a little bit kind of bluey color in here. This is still wet, so I'll let it bleed in to that existing color. And then it is a little bit. darker right along in here because of the way the uh, sun is shining on it. So it does have a shadow. So let's put that in. And even that little bug is keep casting a shadow. So that's cute. And then it kind of goes down the center again. Like that. And then while that's wet, I'm going to take some of that bright color. And we'll just go over top of this part here. Let it bleed into each other. Just give it a little bit more bright look. And changes the color just a little bit from the background like that let's do this little buggy so he's kind of or she it's almost it's not really red it's more on the pinky side so let's see what we can do here I would say a lizard and crimson, probably. Let's try that. And then it darkens a little bit as it turns because of the shadow. And he does have a white area on the back of his. We can put that in with gouache. So this is a very quick one. I thought it would be cute for you guys to try. I'm going to take a little bit of water, just water on my brush. Like that. Hey, Joan. Good to see you. So that's cute. It's starting to bleed a little bit there. Just lift it. See if we can get some of that green. Although that's, well, sometimes you can get it off. Sometimes not, though. Depends on your paper and your paint. So let's give that a dry because I want to put in some black. So as you can see, your watercolor does dry a little bit lighter. So sometimes you do have to go back in. You don't have to, but uh, sometimes you do. I think I'll go a little darker on the bud. So I'll take a little bit more of that... Uh, Green Appetite Genuine color. I'll put a little bit more. Maybe not everywhere, but I'm going to dot it. Just 
It's a little more uh, darker on the, this part, the, the underneath. And we're going to add a bunch of uh, kind of that white and it's almost a yellowish gold color of those little hairs. You can see there's still a little bit, not as much uh, concentration as you go up, but there's still a little bit. So you don't want to just suddenly stop because then it'll look a little bit odd, a little lighter around there. And then this is still quite dark in there. So I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And this part here was really dark. That little bug is casting quite a shadow. So we'll put a little bit more down here. Just bring it down. And right there. That. Okay. That looks pretty good now. Uh, I, have, I have just put all the card and goodies away that I bought from the craft show. Oh, you were at a craft show. That must have been fun. Or were you in the craft show? I know you make some fantastic uh, stencils. I'm going to add a little bit more color now to the back side here. Kind of bring it up. And around just a bit there is a little bit of a line it's kind of the um, the shiny the shell so you'll be seeing a little bit of shine on it and we'll uh, play with it a little bit Maybe, let's see, uh, maybe we'll just bring some of this out just a bit, soften that. Like that. Maybe even darker in here. Um, I think I might even a little bit of red with that just around the back right in here because it's really dark in there I don't want puddles though okay let's dry that You got bleeding. That happens in sketchbook paper. Doesn't really bleed too much on the other side though, which is good. Just put a little bit more in. And maybe see if we can fix this up, up a little bit. OK, 
good. Okay, so we want to make a nice dark. It's not, you can make a black, but let's see. I have the indigo. Mix some of that red we had. And then if you add a little bit of brown, so burnt umber with it and a little bit more indigo. You kind of have to just play with it back and forth. You will get a really dark, dark. Hey, Dorothy, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so he has a shine on. his head so you're just seeing a little bit of black and then the rest is kind of shiny A little bit dark in here too. And there's, there's a little foot showing there. And then the other one is right here. So right there. Like that. Did I get my sleeve in it? Probably. I'm so bad for that. And then the little bugs dots can be the same color. So they aren't necessarily circles. They're irregular shaped dots. But they're not, um, the edges are smoother. They're just irregular. Gonna make this a little bit darker. Like that. Okay. So there's the little he's not facing us, so um I because there's a highlight on there on his head, what I can do is darken some of that area around that highlight with background color. And then it'll uh, show up a little better. So let's darken this area here. That'll help. Same within here. And then just take the edges and soften them. And then it'll look natural. Soften them out. That. And there we see his head now. All right. I'm just going to soften this line here so I don't want it to be too hard. There. All right. Now let's dry that and we'll use some dip pen. Thank you. 
Okay. So I'm just going to move this to the side so I don't end up having my arm go in it. Oh, thanks, Dot. Okay, so here's my dip pens. So this is that um, blue pumpkin one. And I found the nib or the handle for it. So we want uh, just to, let's see if this is going to be too thick or not. I might have to add water. So there's lots and lots. Let's try it on here. Might need water in it. Yeah, it's too thick. Okay. Has to be the right consistency or it won't work. So let's put some water in that and shake it up. Now this is um, sterile water. Uh, I guess I'll shake it. So you don't you don't want to just add tap water to your bottle because you could get uh, mold. So hopefully this will be good. Let's see. Test it. It's going to write. Well, maybe not. Might have to put a little bit more in. Let's see. Just a smidge more, I think. All right, more time. I just wanted to use the bleed proof because then you won't get the green coming up. It'll be nice and bright. A lot of times when you put a gouache over top, the uh, base color will eventually bleed through. And I want it nice and bright. Okay, let's see if this works. It was working. This pan was working really well. Hope I didn't botch it. Hmm. Well, this is. Wanted. I can't believe that 
maybe it's dirty because I just used it. And I thought I cleaned it really well. This is why I don't use Depends that much, because they drive me nuts. <laughs> oh, let me try the other ink. Where was it that I was writing with? <sighs> Not too long ago. Did I put it? Oh, for Pete's sakes. I can't believe. How do I lose these things? What's this one? No, nope, that's not it. Bombay. Is it this one? Yeah, there it is. The Doc Martens pen white. Let's try that one. If that's not it, then I guess I have to use a different nib. This is crazy. So I want this is the reason why I bought the ink and the nibs it's because I <laughs> it drives me nuts using the pen and it gets it skips like a regular gel pen um, it skips or it's not uh, opaque enough now this is much looser yeah I think it was too thick still. It has to be a really thin, thin consistency. All right. Off and running. Okay. So start off with the center because they'll be facing us. Uh, kind of turned down. But there's a lot of them. Some of them might be a little bit thicker than others and then as we go up then they start turning outwards and very very thick lots and lots of them so they overlap it's kind of a messy and they kind of stick out You want them kind of uh, uneven. They're not. They're not all the same length. Some are longer than others. Some are thicker than others. Some are wavy. Some are straight. Just kind of have to play with it. This is my favorite part of doing it. 
I love this part. Putting in the pen work. Oop, too much. Let's see if we can get it up. I don't like this one either. Like I said, I'm not an expert on pen work. I just like to play around with it. You could probably do this with a, a brush if you want to try. If you don't have a dip pen. Uh, there's not as many on this side. Oh, I'm going to stop. And just a few down the sides. Like in the center. See them more um, on the side than you do on the stem in the center as you go down to the. But you do have to watch how they're laying because there is a pattern to that. My garden hose nozzle and spray gun fell apart today. Oh no, really? Oh, that's so aggravating when that happens. And it's usually in the spring. I know I had to get a new hose. And yeah, my nozzle went too. Did you have it outside, Dot? I know you guys had a really, really cold winter this year. You probably weren't used to taking stuff in. I imagine there probably was some people that ended up having uh, frozen uh, taps outside too. So your your um, Weather is changing over there a lot. It's too bad. You're going to have to. I was watching um, Gardening World and they were talking about that, how they're thinking they're going to have to change the way they do their gardens and what they plant. They're, some areas aren't going to be able to have the tropicals anymore. So it just doesn't survive like it used to. Oh, I did it again. Ah, uh, pain. Gardener thinks they froze it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably getting a lot of that. Guys really had a terrible, terrible uh, cold winter for you guys, especially since you guys aren't used to that type of weather. Crazy, eh? How things change so quickly, too. Like, usually we get a chance to um, get used to new temperatures or a different zone 
ranking as far as temperatures. But it's just crazy how quickly it's changing. I remember as a teenager here along the lakes here, we were always considered zone B or zone four, and now we're five B, almost six. It's crazy. I want some more right in here. It's fairly congested in there. I wonder if um, doesn't like watercolor or this paper. Could be the paper too. I'm going to try using my uh, mapping pen just for the heck of it. <laughs> See what happens. Experiment. We can always go back to this. Let's try the mapping pen. So it'll be a little bit. Oh, it works pretty good. That's good. Then you have these little hairs coming off of the lighter parts here. This is a very fine nib, so it's going to be a little bit harder to see. It's fun just playing though. See what we can do with it. There's lots and lots along the sides here. If you had a really, really fine Posca, you might be able to do that with this. Uh, I know they have a really fine one now. I don't know if it's called Extra Fine or Micron Fine, something like that. I can't remember. Did it again. Got a got a dip. <laughs> there. Luckily it comes up. Some hairs on my I think too. I tend to um, push too hard. Do any of you guys use a nib pen? 
What do you like? Those are certain kinds you like. I'm going to try that other one again. A little bit thicker line. Just to have to learn to be patient too. I have, have you ever used the Copic white ink? Copic white ink, no, I don't think I have. Have you? Do tell. Do you like it? Never, never even thought of that, Devin. Is it come in a bottle? Like, is it for the, um, their markers? Or is it a, I'm not sure if they have a, Uh, what do you call it? Spray gun inks, too. Hi, by the way, didn't see you come in. Um, yes, I have a little bottle and it has a brush in it. I haven't used it lately because I forget. It. Yeah, <laughs> it is nice and opaque. Okay. Um, is it, so is it meant for? using in any kind of pens or markers or is it just kind of like a correction type of stuff See, I'm getting very, um, I'm rushing. And that's not good. When you're doing art, don't rush. Try not to anyways. Because things turn out much better if you don't. So you tend to take shortcuts. At least I do. If I rush. some longer ones here. Kind of all over the place. Just need, some of these need to be a little thicker. Uh, let's 
Let's see. All right. Now he does have a little bit of highlight on his shell of his body. And I think I'm going to cover this up so I don't spill it. And I'll take this one out to clean it. So let's put a little bit just a smidge. I got some on the side of my bot bottle here. And more on the top part here and smidge right there then he does have I should have done that when I had the he has a little bit on his or is that just a hair could be hairs that are coming up here that he's eating maybe I don't know that might have to put a little bit of uh, black in his legs darken them up a little bit Okay, so here's some. Actually, before this, this dry. Oh, good. Take it down a little bit like that. Okay, so it wasn't so hard to line. Then let's put in. Uh, let's dry that. It's not quite dry yet. Um, my phone is double posting. So weird. Bye, Devin. Have a great day. Mine was doing the same during the double post. In the chat? That's kind of... I don't see it as a double post. So just drying some of this white where it gets in the way. Almost.
<laughs> That's right, Kim. Okay, that should do it. Put this up again. Let's uh, fix this little guy's feet. Make it a little darker. Some of the, these can be a little bit darker. And I'm just going to make some circles just to darken some of them, more or less on the back part of the dot. Not as uh, dark in the center. Like that. And this can be dark under here. Can't really tell um, where the leg starts and ends type of thing. So. Or where, where the head and the... that looks good all right and then okay now I don't know if you can see this but they're they're kind of tipped in yellow so let's take some I would say it's more on the yellow ochre side, but really, really watered down. So I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll try it. It's just a very light, you could actually halo it. And I'm just going to take the water where that edges and just you don't have to do this. This is just me being me. <laughs> so I like to do this type of thing. Now uh, there's even some in here. Some of these are kind of more on the yellow side. So let's color some of them. Kind of soften them up a little bit. So they're not so bright. Same with this here. You may not even see the difference. Um, it's hard to tell. You could probably take a marker and just marker it all too, but I just wanted a little bit of softness to it. It was kind of bright. Even though there is a lot of white in it, there is some yellow. So it just uh, calms it down a little bit.
probably can't even see it. All right. Is there anything else? Let's dry that and let's see what else we can do. Thanks, Tori. Thanks, Dorothy. Kim. Uh, pencil crayons, colored pencils, and let's see, color this is, nope, it's too dark, mm. a lighter one, this one might work. Or maybe even lighter. Hmm. Maybe. There's that kind of a bluish green shade to this. poppy bud in the little areas. just want to put some of that in right in here too. It's kind of a I love detail. Can't help myself. And then a little bit darker, kind of. That's not even a colored pencil. Let's see. That might do. Well, a little bit dark. Hmm. Maybe. Let's see what this one is. Hmm. No, not really. Not bad. We'll try it. I just want a little bit of a darker area in some of these for uh, a little bit of, of shading, really dark areas in here. And I do like using colored pencil in my watercolor. It's just for that really tight areas where 
can't quite get it in, in with paint, then I like to use this. Just helps. Let's try some of this. A little lighter. As you go, and then you can just take this lighter color. Blend some of this in here and there. So it's not too uh, sudden a uh, change. Like that. All right. I think that's good. Not bad. Could be a little more more goldy color in there, but um, I don't know if I'd be able to get it or not. Let's see. We'll try some colored pencil just to see if we can. Oh, that's another one of those. Let's try this. It is raised a little bit. It would take me ever, forever, to put some of these in, but I'm not going to do them all. They're kind of raised because they are done with a nib. So you can color them a little bit. Just a very light touch, and it, it seems to just grab onto that raised part of the ink. That's interesting. See? Just got to experiment. See what works. Doesn't always, but it's uh, always worth a try. So the ends were kind of uh, ochre color. They weren't. It was more white going in towards the stem. These are the things I see. I know I'm crazy. <laughs> it's just a sketchbook, but this is how I learn. This is how I try things, and I'm not worried about messing up because. That's the only way you can learn is by messing up. Everything you learn in school, you messed up with. Because you can't learn without mistakes, guys. Sorry to tell you that, but it's true. So embrace your mistakes. Because that's when you get the ideas. Yeah, that's better. I like that. It's a little more. The color I want. Right in there. Not so bright. Yeah. There we go. Twenty third, twenty three. All right, so I will show you. So, see how you it's a, not quite as bright um, around the edges, 
but lighter inside, closer to the stem. That's the way they are. So you can see this. See how they have that white in along the bud and the stem, but it gets yellow as it goes out. Now it's not as much on this one, but it's better than all white. All right. So there it is. So I'll try and um, get the link for this uh, Pixabay royalty-free image for you, and then you can uh, try it yourself. Have some fun. Um, if you see anything in your garden, take a picture of it. See what you can do with it. As you can see, it's not exactly the same, but your reference photo is just for that, a reference. It doesn't have to be a copy. If you wanted a copy of it, you could just make a photocopy. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joan. Tori. Dorothy, Kim. All right, I will let you guys go so you can enjoy the rest of the day and we'll see you on Thursday. Uh, it will be a mermaid because it'll be the last week of mermaid and uh, I'll have a, a traceable for you. So make sure uh, to Check that out in the community tab. And um, if you're not um, joined in on the memberships, either in Patreon or YouTube, then make sure you uh, join. It's only $2.99 a month. And it includes all of the past two years traceables. So you can check that out. And we'll uh, see you next, this coming Thursday. All right. Have a great Creative day, everybody.